You already know, nothing grinds my gears, gets me ranting and raving quite like a wellness influencer who claims they know the key to healing autoimmunity. Just take these supplements, follow my diet, do what I do, tape your mouth shut, and you too can heal your autoimmunity. Why does this annoy me so much, you might ask? It's intentionally vague. What are we talking about here, folks? What are we talking about? Autoimmunity is not a vibe. It's not an aesthetic. There are over a hundred different auto immune conditions. Many of you guys who watch my channel have these autoimmune conditions and this has got to unnerve you as well because you know firsthand that these are complex medical issues that require medical management. You can't just heal, cure, remedy them by taping your mouth shut at night. Well, what does any of this have to do with me, a dermatologist, you might ask? Well, if you weren't aware, contrary to popular belief, dermatologists, we don't just fill and bill. We are the specialty that can diagnose skin problems that are manifestations of underlying medical conditions such as various autoimmune diseases. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some skin warning signs of true autoimmune conditions. First of all, what the heck is autoimmunity anyway? What is an autoimmune disease? Autoimmune diseases are diseases where your immune system attacks parts of you. Specifically, cells in the immune system known as T cells and B cells do not like something about you, whether it be a specific tissue in your body, a cell, something in your skin, and they produce what's known as as antibodies, little sticky notes, if you will, that tack on to what they don't like. And those antibodies are known as autoantibodies because they are against self. Autoantibodies can cause quite a cascade of unfortunate events leading to, well, skin rashes, as well as kidney problems. Any organ system can be severely negatively impacted. Autoimmune diseases are a lot more common in women compared to men. There is definitely a genetic component here with genes identified for specific specific autoimmune diseases. If you have a family history of autoimmune disease, there's an increased likelihood that you will have an autoimmune disease. It's not just your genetics alone that determine disease manifestations, it's also environmental exposures. And there are a variety of things that can trigger your body to start attacking yourself if you are genetically predisposed to this, such as a viral infection, medications, supplements, physical or emotional trauma, underlying illness, puberty, pregnancy, sun, and certain cancers. Skin warning sign number one is you develop these milky white patches that turn porcelain bone white. This is vitiligo. Vitiligo is an autoimmune disease where your immune system attacks the pigment producing cells, the melanocytes, and over time in given areas of the skin, you get loss of those cells, loss of pigment. These patches are typically asymptomatic, but sometimes they can itch, they can be small, and size, taking on the appearance of a smattering of confetti across the surface of your skin. They're well-defined with convex borders. Initially, sometimes there may be a margin of redness to them. Patches of vitiligo are more common in sun-exposed areas and areas that are subject to repeat trauma. Vitiligo is a condition that exhibits something known as the isomorphic response, or Kebner, in which any sort of skin injury or trauma can elicit more vitiligo. In some cases, not only does vitiligo go attack the pigment cells in your skin, but also attacks the pigment cells in your hair. And you can get what's described as leukotrichia white hairs on your scalp, your eyelashes, your eyebrows, body hair. Not only is vitiligo itself an autoimmune skin disease, but having vitiligo means you are at an increased likelihood of having other autoimmune health conditions, especially autoimmune thyroid disease. So much so that if you have vitiligo, it's probably a good idea that your doctor monitor at least once a year your thyroid. Patients with vitiligo are also at an increased risk for rheumatoid arthritis and an autoimmune disease that causes low B12 known as pernicious anemia. They're also more likely to have systemic lupus erythematosus and they're also more likely to have warning sign number two. All of a sudden mind your own business and you look over and you've got this bald patch. Zero hair in a given patch. That is an autoimmune attack against the hair follicle and the condition is known as alopecia areata. Alopecia areata can lead to patches of complete hair loss in the scalp that over time resolve. Then later on in life, maybe you get more patches elsewhere. Some people, however, who have alopecia areata, it involves a more widespread area, including the entire scalp, and in some cases can involve hair all over the
the body. Eyebrows, eyelashes, underarms, you name it. Check out my video on alopecia areata. I go into a deep dive there. And I also, as a side note, have a video on vitiligo where I do a deep dive on vitiligo and its treatments. But alopecia areata and vitiligo, people often have both conditions and having either one or both together mean, guess what? You are of a genetic makeup that is just more inclined towards having autoimmune diseases, most specifically thyroid disease, but also other autoimmune diseases. Condition number three, you develop these areas of itchy, inflamed skin that becomes very fragile, almost takes on the appearance of wet cigarette paper. It's very fragile and so it's vulnerable to tearing, to becoming ulcerated, and for bruising to develop in that area, even for you to develop frank blood blisters. Often happens in the genital area, around the anus, in both men and women, but in some cases can happen extra genitally and the condition is known as lichen sclerosis, which I have a whole video doing a deep dive on. This condition is again more common in women, but it definitely affects men as well. It tends to affect mostly women after the age of 50, but of course there are exceptions and younger people most certainly can be affected. This condition is debilitating. It's very itchy, it's very uncomfortable, and the affected areas start to scar down and this can negatively impact the function, especially in the general area. Many people develop problems with constipation, painful bowel movements, pain on urination, also painful sexual intercourse, stinging with urination. Lichen sclerosis is an autoimmune condition where there is some sort of antigen in your skin that the immune system doesn't care for and leads to this type of destruction in the skin. People who have lichen sclerosis, many of them already have a personal history of some other existing autoimmune condition already or someone in their family does. 20% of patients who have lichen sclerosis have autoimmune thyroid disease. So again, this is another one of those conditions where you need to be on the lookout for your thyroid, but also other autoimmune diseases. Again, that autoimmune low B12 disease, pernicious anemia, and alopecia areata is known to be more common in people with lichen sclerosis. Now, I wanna take a pause right here because everything I've mentioned up until this point, vitiligo, alopecia areata, lichen sclerosis, these conditions, you're more likely to have autoimmune diseases. These are autoimmune skin conditions. However, not everyone with these has other autoimmune diseases or will go on to have other autoimmune disease. Just something that we need to be careful, we need to be watchful of because it's more likely. But let's talk about something that is a skin finding of an autoimmune body disease. And that is your eyelids. Your eyelids develop this purplish, reddish discoloration with swelling, mostly on the upper eyelids, affecting the skin around the eyes. This is known as a heliotrope rash. This is a warning sign of an autoimmune disease known as dermatomyositis. Dermatomyositis is an autoimmune condition that affects the skin and the skeletal muscles. So in addition to this eyelid rash, you also have muscle weakness. Black Americans are more likely compared to white Americans to have dermatomyositis, but it can affect anyone. There are two sort of presentations of it. One affects children and the other affects older adults, usually in their 50s. This is not by any means the only skin warning sign of dermatomyositis, but it is the most common presenting skin sign. Then these patients often go on to have an inflammation in their scalp, looks like really aggressive dandruff all of a sudden, and and they have a rash on their upper back and their hands and their fingernails. Let me know in the comments if you would like a deep dive on dermatomyositis. I have a lot of deep dives on this channel on many autoimmune diseases. This is just a roundup today on some skin warning signs, but one on dermatomyositis would be relevant. Now, I mentioned that one of the presentations of this is common in adults around the age of 50 to 60. Here's where it's really important because 25% of those adults who have dermatomyositis, they will have an underlying cancer that is the trigger for the dermatomyositis. So if you have an adult who has new onset dermatomyositis, they're getting the heliotrope rash, they're worked up, they're evaluated, then it's important to go looking for any possible hidden cancers. So that is something that needs to be thoroughly evaluated in these patients. Not only can cancer be a trigger for dermatomyositis, but it's also a lot more common in people whose occupation
patient exposed them to silica. It may also come after a viral infection. Skin finding number five, you have these smooth skin colored nodules over surfaces that are under pressure or repeat friction, like your forearm, your elbows, your fingers, your back. These can range in size up to several centimeters in diameter. They can be quite large. For the most part, these don't cause any discomfort, but if they become very large, they can sort of break open, ulcerate, at which point they make you at increased risk for a skin infection coming in. These are rheumatoid nodules. Check out my video on the skin warning signs of rheumatoid arthritis, and you'll recall from that video, if you caught it, that rheumatoid nodules are one of the most common non-joint findings of this autoimmune joint disease. And last but certainly not least, a skin finding maybe you have even heard about, really important to know about and to recognize. It is the development of swollen red areas of skin overlying the cheeks, top of the nose. It does not involve the nasolabial folds because you can get a lot of different rashes on the face that look like this but are not it, like rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis. It's called a malar rash or a butterfly rash. This is a skin sign of lupus. Lupus is an autoimmune disease. There are many different manifestations, ways in which it can affect the body. Check out my video all about lupus. I do a deep dive there. This is what it looks like in a deeper skin tone. This rash can get pretty intense. It can ulcerate, be very painful and disfiguring, often triggered by sun exposure. Sun exposure is a big trigger. Patients with lupus are photosensitive. Forgot to mention, patients with dermatomyositis also often are very photosensitive sensitive, which is why as a side tangent rant, sunscreen and sunscreen advancement and development is so important because these patients really need aggressive sun protection because if you weren't aware, not only do patients with lupus have sun sensitivity, like they get rashes like this that are very uncomfortable, but the sun exposure, it really reveals the antigen that their body reacts against. So it can make them flare systemically to have too much sun. It can make them very sick. The malar rash comes and goes, but it is an important warning sign and one of the earlier warning signs. Lupus is more common in women, much more common in women, and it often presents around puberty um, because of the estrogens. It's thought that the estrogens play a role in, in this. All right, guys, those are six warning signs of actual autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases are challenging. They require complex medical management. In many cases, autoimmune diseases require a whole team of medical experts to manage, not just one type of doctor, but doctors with expertise in different organ systems. It really can be quite involved. So it really grinds my gears, as you can imagine, when people get online and try and fool people into thinking that they healed autoimmunity with a cocktail of herbs and supplements and nighttime routines and relaxation. It's just nonsense. And when I see someone claiming that, I say to myself, you don't have an autoimmune disease quit faking it. <laughs> okay, don't fake it. You don't have anything wrong with you. You just want to sell some supplements. If you're interested in the skin warning signs and the skin findings of different autoimmune conditions, this is the channel for you because I have tons of videos on different autoimmune diseases, vitiligo, alopecia areata, lupus, scleroderma, lichen sclerosis, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. I'm going to put those down below in the description box and I'll pin them in a comment if you want to binge on and learn more. Also, I have all of these videos saved in a playlist called Skin Warning Signs of Health Not to Miss because I also go into other skin manifestations of internal illnesses that are not autoimmune but still of importance. All right, y'all. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.